Has the Thames Barrier really immunized London against flooding? Let's find out in this next episode of The Science of Disasters. London, England has a long history of flooding, including from rainfall and from North Sea storm surge. The Thames Barrier, downstream from the city, is said to protect it from the worst of the flooding. It does change the character of floods, keeping a lot of water out of the center, as do the raised and strengthened walls where the Thames runs through the city. The expectation that London is now immune from storm surge and Thames flood disasters is one factor driving expensive riverside developments. The high rises of the financial center of Canary Wharf ascend from the revealing place names of Mudchute and Marsh Wall. Across the river on the Greenwich Peninsula, an ecology park presents a wetland to educate locals and visitors about the nature that should be there. Wet areas, which would previously have adjoined the river, soaking up rainwater and providing room for a storm surge, have now been drained for apartments with prices beyond what most current Londoners could afford. The evidence of the changes made to the river remains. The Thames Path is a walking trail that goes right through London, allowing people to wander along the banks of the river cutting the megacity in two. Dodging the crowds leads us past landmarks such as the Houses of Parliament and the Tate Modern Art Gallery, with it evident how much the river is controlled. Sheer walls confine the flow, with the tide revealing and immersing scattered, pebble-strewn beaches that can trap people as the water rises. The Royal National Lifeboat Institution's busiest station sits in the shadow of Waterloo Bridge. With the rescue crew on site and ready to go 24-7 because the cold, fast-flowing Thames gives people only minutes to live if they fall in and few ways to climb up the slippery walls. The Thames Path in London reveals the waterway's history of continual control and narrowing as the city expanded just south of Whitehall Gardens between the embankment and Westminster stops on the London Underground a weather-worn plaque describes Queen Mary's steps. Excavations in 1939 uncovered steps designed by Christopher Wren in 1691 for Queen Mary II, who used them to descend to a river terrace. Today, the steps sit over 50 meters from the bank of the Thames, all of which has been filled in since the end of the 17th century. Limiting the river's width means that, for the same amount of water, the depth and speed will increase. Evidence for this appears further downstream, underneath Southwark Bridge. Engraved in the pedestrian tunnel is a description of frost fairs, carnivals held on the ice when the Thames froze. The last one was in 1814, after which new bridge designs and sustained river engineering quickened the tidal flow, inhibiting freezing. We have shaped and altered the river, which means we have made London's floods by constricting the river's water between walls. In other words, human actions have made London vulnerable to floods. While a storm surge driving up the River Thames or rainwater coursing down it has its origin in nature, the flood which central London would experience and the damage it would wreak would be of human construction by putting extensive, expensive property on land which would otherwise have taken these floodwaters. The development often happened under the assumption that engineering and constructing barriers stop flooding. We alter the hazard while substantially increasing the vulnerability, meaning that flood risk skyrockets and a London flood disaster is waiting to happen. What has made Toronto, Canada a green city today? Clue. It goes back to a disaster in 1954. Join me to find out more in our next episode of the Science of Disasters. Subscribe and watch all the episodes in this series. <laughs>